Hi, if you're new here, I'm Anna from Miss A Crochet and I'm a bit addicted to crocheting plushies. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. This is going to be a breakdown of my very, very first market ever. If you haven't checked out my previous market prepping videos, I recommend that you go and watch those before you watch this video, just because there are kind of like some spoilers and it shows you how I've been preparing for this market for literal weeks. Before we actually jump into the video, we are gonna check in with past me to show you everything that I brought with to this market and my prices. I would like to say, if you don't agree with my prices, if you think I'm overcharging, if I'm undercharging, if I just shouldn't be doing this at all, um, please, I'll delete the comments if you say something rude. I, I don't care. <laughs> um, this is my choice. This is what works for me. It's my very first market. It's just an experiment. I've looked at what people sell on Etsy and their prices, and those are higher than what I'm selling, and I'm selling in person. So please just be considerate, and this is my choice, my business, and it's my first time doing this. As of now, I have 136 plushies worth $1,003, which is insane. So I'm going to start showing you them now because this video is going to be long. Up first are these turtles that I'm selling for between $20 to $23. Um, these three are $23, and then this one's only $20 for some reason. I don't really know what I was thinking, but... I have four of these turtles, this bigger turtle for $23, and this slightly smaller turtle for $19. I also have this little baby turtle for $12. These fruity turtles, this one is two, four, and six dollars. And that is all the turtles I have, although I do have two in progress that are not done yet. Now on to Octopi, I have these two at $12 each. I also have these two bigger ones at $15. Next, I have two cuttlefish. This one is only $2 because I think its head is too big for its fins and this one is $8 because it's a cuter color and its fins are more proportionate. I've also had this one in my inventory for over two years and I just want to get rid of it. Up next are my jellyfish. These are both $5. Again, I've had them in my inventory for over two years. I just want to get rid of them. This is a jellyfish I made in August? July? August? I don't know. But he's $30 and he's really big. Then I have this fuchsia jellyfish for $23. Okay, I also forgot about these octopi which come with a mama and baby. This is with acrylic yarn so I'm only charging $2 for the two of them. I made it like a year and a half ago. It's not my best work. I really want to get rid of them and I have four sets. Ah! I have another octopus that I made two years ago and I have him at $9. I don't know. We'll see if he sells. He's big, but he's not stuffed very well and his eyes are too small. Again, I really just want him out of my house. Up next, I have three of these big frogs for $10 each. I also have these three neon frogs for $8. The last frogs are these three, which I'm selling at $7. These three alligators are priced at $17 each. I have another octopus that I forgot about and this is $17. I also found this guy and he's only a dollar. I have four acrylic shrimp for $10 each. I probably could have charged more because they take me more time to make, but I got the yarn for free, so I'm just gonna charge 10 for them. I also have this big shrimp, which I'm also charging $10 for. I'm charging $6 for this dolphin, $10 for this seal, $11 for this stingray, and $16 for this whale. I have two of these neon medium crabs at $8, and I have three baby crabs at $6. These guys only take me maybe 10 or 15 minutes to make, but they do use Bernat Velvet, which is kind of pricey yarn. I have 11 of these Just a Little Crabbies. This pattern is available on my Etsy and I am selling them for $10. They take me 20 minutes to make and I use Bernat Blanket. That's everything I'm gonna have on one table. It feels like a lot, but then when I have it set up, it really isn't. So hopefully I can maybe make some more things tonight, finish those two turtles, but if I don't, oh well. I still have 136 items. I do have a little stand that I'm going to be putting in front of my booth, which is going to hold my two axolotls. This pink one is for $35. It took me a while to make. I made it when I was testing out um, Michael's Sweet and Snuggles yarn. I made it in a video actually, and he has a lot of details. Let me see. He's made with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 pieces, which is why he's at $35. I also have this green axolotl that I made for Halloween last year and I'm pricing it at $20. Speaking of Halloween, I have these three ghosts. This is my own pattern that I just made last night and they are at $13. Continuing on with the Halloween pattern, these are my candy corn fellas. It is a Bernamp blanket adaptation that I made and I'm selling these for $15. These three bats are by Bubba Days. It is a free pattern on Instagram and I'm charging 
$18 per bat. This one has fangs. This one just has a cute little nose. Comment and let me know which face you like better. I really like the fangs because it's more Halloween-y, but this is really easy to embroider, so I don't know. Another Halloween make, I made this little duck in a dinosaur costume last year and I'm charging $2 for this because honestly I don't really like it. Next I have Gerald Ghost from Not Jaded Co. This one is for $12 and this one is for $10. Another Not Jaded Co. pattern are these stress pets. I have a special sign for them actually. Stress pets like a stress ball but cuter. I'm selling these for $5 and I have 11 of them. Another free pattern that I really love are these opossums. It's a free pattern on Instagram. I am charging $16 for the bigger one and $10 for the baby. I have three big ones as well. I made this guy forever ago. Um, he is not very well stuffed. I have him priced at $5 because he isn't stuffed very well, but he did take up a lot of yarn and I think he's still pretty cute, just a little squishy. I also have these three glitter bees. I used to charge $15 for these, but because I'm going to like this market, and I've thought about it more and I've looked and I've thought, you know, okay, it takes the glitter yellow, black, and cream, and pink yarn. I'm going to charge out a little bit more for them, especially because bees are so on trend. I also have these bees, which is by Crochet Crochet, who I pattern tested for. And I am charging $18 for these and I have four. I have seven of these velvet bees. This is my own pattern. It's, it's a bee. I mean, there's so many free bee patterns. But I do charge $13 for these. I think they're super, super cute. They are not no sew, and they do have the color changes, which is why I'm charging a little bit more for them. Here is my Angry Uterus. I made this last year when Roe v. Wade was overturned, and I am charging $20 for this. This is my most expensive item. This is a Bohorosaurus from Mama Made Minis, and I am charging $50 for this item. It honestly could be better. I made it a year ago, but still, it's really big. I mean, the body's nice. There isn't stuffing like falling out of the head. I really do want to make some more of these because I know people love them and they're a really good seller for others. But the spikes took me so long to make. It took me forever to make this guy. I think I was newer at crocheting, which is why I was a lot slower. So I think if I made it again, it wouldn't be as big of a task. I believe this guy is my second most expensive item. It is a fall guy. I'm charging $40 for him. He looks really good. I made him last year around Christmas. I was going to give him as a gift with like everybody in my family was going to get each a special plushie, but then I never finished everybody else's. So I just have him. Also look at his butt. He has a little booty. This is the super famous club crochet triceratops. This pattern was actually hard for me to learn and I've only made one and I'm charging $13 for it. I know it's a really big hit and I wanted to make some more. It just uses up so much of my brain that I couldn't force myself to make more before this market. I only have three mushrooms that I'm selling and this is one of them. I made this last fall. Again, it's not that great. I think I hot glued these on, which is kind of embarrassing, but I'm charging only $4 for it. It's cute, but nothing special. The other two mushrooms I made are these mushroom puppets by Cable and Canvas. I made these in July, I think and they're super fun. I really wanted to make more, but I didn't have time. This guy is from Murphy Crochets on Instagram. I believe it's a free pattern. I pattern tested for them last year and I made this. So it's a Thanksgiving turkey and I'm charging $18 for it because it has all the feathers, a detachable hat, and I think it's really cute. Another pattern test I did last year that I'm selling is this pancake whale. Um, I made a raspberry pancake whale the classic pancake whale and then, and then just this whale. I'm charging $2 for this one, $6 for this one, and $2 for this one. We are on to my own patterns from Studio Ghibli. This is my calcifer pattern and I'm selling him for $19. I also have five soot sprites that I'm selling for $13 each. I also have this random goose. It was a $1 pattern I got off of Etsy. Honestly, I don't really like it, so I'm selling it for $7 just trying to make up the price of yarn and materials. Last but not least, we have my Oak and Marlowe chickens. I am selling each chicken for $14, and then I believe this bigger one is going to be for $16. In total, I have 11 of the $14 chickens and then one $16 chicken. That's it. That's everything I'm bringing, all 136 items worth $1,003. That is insane. I think last week when I did all my tallying, I was at 820 something. So in one week, I made about $200 of plushies, which feels great. Um, I'm really excited. 
I cannot wait to go to this market tomorrow. I really hope people show up. I don't know. It seems like it's not super, super busy, but I think it'll be good to have a kind of chill market as my first test. The market that I've ended at was called the Summer Folk Festival, which was put on by the Finn Creek Museum, which is an open air exhibit for Finnish culture and Finnish buildings in New York Mills, Minnesota. On Saturday, August 19th, my mom and I woke up at 5 a.m. and we made the two hour drive to New York Mills. Setup was supposed to start at 7.30, but I knew what I wanted and where I wanted it to be. I timed myself, you know, putting it up, tearing it down. So we got there at around 8.30 a.m. and we were easily finished by 9.20 a.m., which is when the first event started. day one market display. I think it turned out really cute. This is kind of my land animals and characters. And then the other table is all of my aquatic animals. I really like that they were separated and they all looked very coordinated. Here you can see some of the historic Finnish Minnesotan buildings. At first it was pretty slow because there were a bunch of other events and you know it was just morning but there was a puppet pageant where a bunch of kids in the community get together and like create these cool puppet costumes and then there's a play so after that then a bunch of people started coming to our booths. During the puppet pageant, my mom and I counted about 100 to 125 people in the audience, which is really good considering I think maybe 15 people on Facebook said they were going to this event. I did purposely choose this event because I thought it was going to be kind of small and low key, just because it's my first market, you know, what if I forget something really important? Like that would be embarrassing to do like a really big market with a bunch of people. So I think 100 to 150 people a day for my very first market was actually a really good turnout. After the puppet pageant, a bunch of people started coming and like shopping and going out to eat but it was so hot it was so bad I think the high was like 92 degrees Fahrenheit thankfully we did put up the tent and it was really nice in the shade but whenever you know you had to go and get up and go to the bathroom or go get food you would come back just drenched in sweat on the first day there were only seven to eight other vendors and there was only one other person selling crocheted items and they were just baskets so really I had no competition I don't really think that having somebody else there that crochets plushies is like competition because obviously like there are different styles different marketing and different prices but i was really excited that i was like the only person there that had stuff that children liked most of the other stuff was like um sewing projects uh embroidery kind of just like thrifted items metal work and baked goods not to brag but i definitely did have one of the most popular booths because i had items geared towards children parents young adults and honestly, I mean, amigurumi and like fun plushies can be for anyone. So I definitely had the widest range of consumers. Although there was this one lady and she was really popular too because she was selling finished baked goods. So like she used old finished recipes and like all their ingredients and all these like spices that people from Finland who immigrated here used in these areas. So her stuff was really popular because it aligned with what was going on at the museum culturally. I also met my new best friends. These two elderly ladies were selling a bunch of sewn goods next to us and we ended up chatting the entire day. After the last event hosted by the Finn Creek Museum, it kind of died down. People were kind of, you know, staying inside or, you know, going back to their cars and going home. So us and then two other vendors decided to leave early at 3.30. It just wasn't worth sitting outside and like roasting to only have one or two more sales. So at the end of the first day, I did end up selling 22 plushies for $181. I was definitely not expecting that turnaround. I, when we were there, it felt like things were kind of slow and, you know, we'd have people or a lot of people come in at once and then we'd have nobody for a while. And then, you know, somebody would come in and somebody would see that somebody else was here and they would come. I was amazed. On day one, I ended up selling a watermelon turtle for $6, a big bee for $5, the chicken in the dinosaur costume for $2, a medium-sized leggy frog for $8, a squid for $5, the dolphin for $6, my turtle for $23, a frog for $7, one of my crabs for $10, a possum for $16, squid for $5, strawberry turtle for $4, 
an octopus for two dollars a blue crab for ten dollars the pancake whale who i can't remember if it was one dollar or two dollars that's why i said you know i made about 181 to 182 dollars i don't remember I then sold a baby crab for $6, the pink axolotl for $35, four of my stress pets for $20, and then two more of my stress pets for $10, equaling $182, maybe $181, and 22 items that sold. When I was looking on this on the way to our hotel, I was shocked. I really thought that I was going to sell a ton of bees, a ton of chickens, and a ton of octopi, and I sold none. My most popular item of the day was my stress pets. I sold six of them at $5 a piece, making me $30. Tied in second and third place were my Bernat blanket crabs and then my leggy frogs. Everything else was just kind of random items like the dolphin, the possum, squids, my um, fruit turtles. It was just kind of all over the place, which was surprising because I really thought that I had like honed into the trendy items, the bees, chickens, and octopi, and they were not looked at at all. I would also like to say that the hotel was paid for by my parents as a birthday gift so I won't be like including that in my loss of profit because it was a gift for my parents. They took me to this because we ended up canceling our trip to Las Vegas so they kind of added this into my birthday. On day two we got to the Fin Creek Museum at 8:40, and we decided not to put up our tent. That was a mistake. I have sunburn because of that. The weather forecast lied. It said it was going to be cloudy all day. It was not. It also said it wasn't going to rain and I mean I wouldn't really call it rain but it did sprinkle a little bit so I had to put all my plushies back into their tubbies with the help of the two sweetest little girls but still I was like no I really should have put up the tent. Day two started off really slow, and I was worried if we'd made the right choice to come back. I made one sale at like 9 a.m., and it was the booth next to us on the right buying an alligator plushie for their most adorable son ever. Oh my gosh, he was so cute. After that first sale, I did not sell anything for four hours. And yes, that was a long four hours because we didn't have the tent, and I was frying. On day two, they were having the tractor pull, which was like way across from where we were. So everybody was pushed over there and hardly anybody was by us or the food building or the bathrooms. So all I did for four hours was burn my skin, crochet, and talk to my new best friends. Because it was slow, I did get to go into some of their like exhibits. And in one of the buildings, they had a loom and a yarn winder. I also ended up talking to one of the board members and it turns out that he grew up in my hometown and he used to ride the bus from like elementary to high school with my dad. So I asked him and I said next time when we come back next year because we had decided we were coming back next year because of our best friends. I asked him if he could have a skein of yarn on the yarn winder. They already had like a half made rug on the loom. Why couldn't they just get you know a little skein of acrylic yarn and set it up. So after I went and explored and made this request to one of my dad's old neighbors, it finally started getting busy. The tractor pull was over, people were coming back, there was live music outside so they could still hear the music if they came and went to our booths and it got busy again. Then around 4 p.m. I was like completely fried, drenched in sweat, and some other booths started to pack up so my mom and I packed up and left and began our two-hour car ride home. Even though I got a nasty sunburn and was drenched in sweat, I sold 23 items on day two for a total of $285. I was not expecting that. We didn't have a sale for four hours. And then after that event, everybody just came flooding in. I mean, kids were coming in, they were going and getting their parents or they were going and trying to grab their parents and they'd come back and like rethink about what they wanted to get, go and get their parents or go get their parents money and then come back, go back to their parents, come back and buy another item. It was so much fun. So on day two, I ended up selling an alligator for $17. And then the next four plushies were just one purchase, which was a stress pet for $5, a frog for $7, a turtle for $20, and a purple octopus for $9. Then the next two plushies were also on one purchase, which was a stress pet for $5 and then a mushy pop for $8. Then I sold one of the sweetest girls at the market, a $13 ghost. Then I sold an octopus for $2, another octopus for $1. Then I sold a little boy, a goose for $7. 
that same little boy a chicken for $14, but they were both different transactions. So like he bought the goose and then he went back to his friends and then he came back and then he ended up buying the chicken. Then I sold a stingray for $11, a baby possum for $10, the lemon turtle for $2, a baby turtle for $19, a $16 chicken and a $14 chicken. Then I sold two more turtles at $23 each. And then I sold another chicken for $14, a small crab for $6, which a little girl bought for her mom. <laughs> Cause I had a little sign that says, perfect for someone who's just a little crabby. So I gave her a special little sheet that says, I'm just a little crabby so she can give it to her mom. She also got my whale for $16 and that was everything that sold on day two. In total, I ended up selling 45 plushies and making $467 from this two-day market. Honestly, I'm I'm so excited. I was not expecting to sell that many plushies or to make that much money. I just wanted to do this to see if I liked selling in person. Do I like, you know, bulk making things and selling them to people? Or do I like designing patterns and like selling stuff online? I seriously had such a blast doing this market though. It was the best watching like these kids come and then they like go and they touch everything and try and figure out which one they want like which one they can afford and then they think about it and then they'll go back to their friends or like then they'll come back and bring their parents and then their parents are like make a decision like come on and the kids are like oh i don't know like you know like you know they just can't make a decision because they want them all and it was so much fun we had so many little kids like come and talk to us you know one kid looked me up on instagram and then he like he came back to buy another item he's like i really like this one and he held up his phone and it was my angry boba and it showed that he had liked the picture it just melted my heart everyone was so nice nobody said anything about my prices i did have a sign that you know said why crochet plushies can seem pricey you know people always say you can get them on amazon for cheaper but crochet cannot be machine made and i think that sign really helped i saw a bunch of people reading it and i was a little worried it was coming off like too strong but nobody ever said anything to me about my prices you know people were like oh my gosh your stuff is so cute this is so fun it was such a good experience the most popular payment method at this market was definitely cash I believe I came into the market with about $150 cash of 1s, 5s, 10s, and 20s, and then I left with a ton of cash. I ended up only using Venmo twice and then only using my square reader twice as well. A majority of my customers were kids or, you know, parents buying things for their kids. But I did have, you know, one guy come in, he bought a possum for his girlfriend, some other people came in, one mom bought two chickens for herself because she has chickens, and I also had another lady buy a frog because her camper is called, like, the lily pad, so then she has all this frog decor. It was just so much fun. I mean, I had, like, a whole range. I had three-year-old customers to, like, 50-year-old customers. It was just so cool seeing this huge age group really enjoy and appreciate my work and my art. I would like to say if you're ever going to do a market and like a bunch of people come and stop by and they're like, oh my god, this is so cute. Or like they almost buy something and then they put it back. They're going to come back. I had so many like kids, parents, you know, they would look and they'd be like almost buying something. And then they'd be like, well, let's go look at the other booths. And then like, you know, maybe we'll come back. They came back. They come back. If they really, really like your stuff and you're nice to them and you know you interact with them they'll buy your stuff one because they like the stuff and two it's because they like you i had so many conversations with people i mean there were some people who i didn't think were going to buy something and then i talked with them and we talked for a while and then they ended up buying something i mean some of them i think they just bought something because they like talking to me i don't know but if people really really like something and then they leave they'll come back and get it because they know, I mean, it's handmade. I was sitting there crocheting in front of them. There's only one of that plushie, the, the axolotl. The one girl came and like picked it up like three or four times and then she went and got her mom. And her mom was like, oh, you know, like it was, it's a $35 plushie. But the girl was like, oh my God, like she really, really wanted it. And like, that was all she wanted. She kept coming back and then the mom was like, okay. And she got the plushie because she knows I'm sitting there crocheting. It's a one of a kind handmade plushie. My previous prediction that my $23 turtles were gonna be right on the money was correct. I brought six of my 20 to $23 turtles and five of them sold. 
nobody said anything about the price one lady who bought them was a teacher and she like was constantly then begging me whenever she saw me to make an owl because she wants one for her classroom people really really liked the turtles i had them right on the edge of my table so then when you're walking by you can just see like this huge stack of turtles and a lot of people like touched them and like some saw the price and didn't buy it but then they would come in and they would buy other stuff so I think my prediction was spot on. The turtles were perfect. I also really thought my chickens were going to be hit because, you know, everybody's owning chickens. My aunt just got chickens. Our neighbors almost got chickens. The pattern is super cute. The pattern's really popular online. Oak and Marlowe's chickens. I'm sure you've heard of it. And on day one, none of them sold. People would come in, look at the little display and be like, oh my gosh, that's such a cute chicken coop. Like you almost have to get the whole display. Ha ha ha. No one bought a chicken. And I was like, what? I love the chickens. They're like one of my favorites. And I don't know. I don't know. That night I did almost end up lowering the price from $14 to $12, but my mom convinced me not to. She was like, you know what? If you go to another market, that could be your best seller. People really are into chickens right now. It just might not be, you know, at this place. So I ended up keeping them at $14 and it paid off. On day two, I ended up selling four chickens. I sold three for $14 and one of my bigger ones for $16, making me over 50 bucks. So if there are times when something doesn't sell and you think you should lower the price, don't. There will be people that want it for the price that you have set. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, my best seller. I mean, you already have watched this video. I think you kind of know what it was, but it was my stress pets. I brought 11 to this market and I sold nine. These guys literally only take me like 10 minutes to make. It's a free pattern by Not Jaded Co. Easy to memorize. I already memorized it and I made, I think, six while I was there. I think people loved the sign. It's, you know, it said Stress Pets $5, just like a stress ball, but cuter. People really bought them. I mean, one lady bought four, another one bought two. They were perfect for kids, you know, only $5. They were one of my cheapest items. I definitely, definitely will be making more. I already kind of did. And I think it's because I have the sign. They're like, oh my gosh, this is cute. You know, it's a little squeezy guy. It fits in your hand perfect. $5, I'll take it. I have one lady buy four, another lady buy two. It works great for kids. It's only $5. My second bestseller was for sure my turtles. I sold my turtles, I think from 19 to $23. I had one $19, $120 and then for $23. I sold the $19, the $20, and then three of my $23 ones, leaving me only one turtle left. The turtles definitely drew a bunch of people into my booth, even if they didn't get it, they got something else. I will say, despite like all the inventory things that I learned at this market and like what works and what doesn't, the number one thing I learned is that if people like it, they will pay for it. I was genuinely scared to price anything over $20. But then my second best selling item is a $23 plushie. People will buy it. Like I just had to get that through my head and this has really proven that people will. People like stuff that's handmade and unique. My $35 axolotl, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so expensive. People won't buy this. It's not like a really big plushie, but it is detailed. It has 11 parts in it and it took me like three hours to make. So yeah, I have to price it higher. And people bought it. People thought it was so cute. You know, nobody said anything about my prices. And you know what? If they thought it, they thought it. They didn't say anything to me. And they were still like, oh, your stuff is really cute. I was so worried people were going to be like, oh my gosh, this is such a ripoff. Like you can easily just make these, you know, whatever, whatever. And I mean, I would tell people, people would be like, oh my gosh, how long does it take you to make the turtles? And I'd say an hour and a half to two hours. And then they'd see the price and be like, yeah, that's fair. That's it. That's pretty much everything I learned and gained from this experience. Um, as of right now, I have 93 plushies left. I just applied for another market in October. Fingers crossed. It is a lot bigger of a market, but with a smaller stall and a booth fee. So we shall see what happens. They haven't emailed me back yet, but I think I would be perfect there. It's a cheerleading event from elementary to high school with like 20 different schools. There are going to be parents there, probably siblings there watching, and I think it would be a really big hit. So fingers, fingers crossed. 
that I get selected and that I can apply and like enter in because this was super fun and I really do like making and selling plushies. It's just so crazy to think that like you know that night these kids and these people brought their plushies home and like maybe they slept with them in their rooms or maybe they put them on a shelf like that's just so crazy like people have something that I made. I definitely have a bunch of new ideas for inventory you know after hearing like other people talking and being like oh this reminds me of this I was like that's really smart or even just you know clever signage so do stay tuned I will be posting more videos leave me a like comment are you gonna be doing the market I would love to know because you know this was my first market and a bunch of people were like oh I love doing markets and some people say they don't like it so let me know do you like doing markets have you done one are you going to do one and I will see you in next week's video bye <laughs>